Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to meet you again. Uh, first, before I start this very important trick in ICU, you should know, I highly recommend everyone to join and subscribe to our online critical care ultrasound from basic to advanced course, and you will see the link in the first comment. In this series, we will give sample of uh, our online course to know the great value of this course for anyone who is working in the ICU or emergency department. We'll start now by the, uh, the important, very important trick in ICU, the trick one. Uh, we faced a 49-year-old obese patient which was admitted to our ICU because of shock and severe hypoxia. Obese, shock, severe hypoxia, you will think of pulmonary embolism. And when we saw the four chamber view of our patient, we found this dilated ballooning right side, which is more in volume than left side. That means with patient obese and hypoxic and shock, we, we should think about of uh, pulmonary embolism. And uh, in our course, really all cases are real cases. I uh, faced myself and I will let you know about the date here and the timing to know that all clips uh, was taken at the same time. Uh, this was in 2019 uh, year. Uh, so uh, you face a patient obese, shocked, hypoxic with dilated ballooning right side and you will think about uh, pulmonary embolism. Okay. In our course, you will know in shock protocol that the first thing you should do if you face a patient shocked, you should go to inferior vena cava because inferior vena cava will divide the cause of shock almost to 50% and 50%. If you see the inferior vena cava is narrow and totally collapsing, you will think about distributive and hypovolemic shock. But if you see the inferior vena cava dilated, non-collapsing, you are talking about obstructive or cardiogenic shock. So, if the pulmonary embolism is the cause of our patient shock, I will expect the inferior vena cava to be dilated and non-collapsing. You see the inferior vena cava of our patient, at the same time, it is very narrow and totally collapsing. So, this will alert you that there is something else is going on. But why the right side is dilated? In our online course, you will know how to manage by step-by-step -step approach. So, you will know and you will learn that if you see right ventricle is dilated more than left ventricle, before going anymore, you should know, is it acute corbalmonal or chronic corbalmonal? This is very important. Why you know, is it acute or chronic? First, by measuring the wall thickness of the right ventricle. In our patient, our right ventricular wall is thick. It's more than 0 0.5, it's 1.3 centimeter. And assess the function of the right ventricle. In our patient, the TAPSI is 2.2, it's more than 1.7. That means our patient, despite presence of the dilated right ventricle, this right ventricle has thick wall, and good function. That means that this right ventricle is dilated over long time. So he gets the opportunity to compensate for the pressure overload over long time by increasing the wall thickness and improving the function. And this is really, as you will know in our course, this is typical chronic corbalmonal. And our patient has uh, mark, uh, morbid obesity with obstructive sleep apnea and uh, this is uh, an element of core pulmonal since long time. So, sick right ventricular with good TAPC referred to coronisty and compensation. So, in the presence of narrow inferior vena cava, we should think of another cause, another cause of hypoxia and hypotension and sepsis here is very important cause. So, when we went to the lung, we found very bad pneumonia with mobile air bronchogram 
consolidation with mobile air bronchograph pneumonia is the cause of deterioration of this chronic corbomenal case. Patient really improved with IV fluids. Uh, I highly recommend everyone who is working in critical care area to join our course. You will see a lot and a lot about these tricks in our course. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.